Nerf Zombie Strike Crosscut Review. This is a spring blaster with two front loading barrels and it also has a rotating chainsaw thing, which is pretty cool. Let's get into the review. Included is the blaster itself, a few Zombie Strike Elite darts, and the instructions. Now going over the externals and performance in a bit more detail, of course starting up with the front. This blaster is a front loader, it has two barrels up here, you can just front load the dart like that and you're good to go. It has a smart air restrictor system, meaning when you prime it, it fires one at a time, whichever is loaded, so if you only have one dart, it won't dry fire out of that one, it fires whatever's loaded. Moving back is the saw blade cross cut thing, which is kind of the gimmick of the whole blaster here. The material of this is foam, um, as you can see it's flexing considerably. The center mount is plastic, but everything above that that could actually strike someone is very um, comfortable. The gimmick of this is when you pull this bottom trigger here, it spins the blade, which is super aggressive looking. More on that part in my opinion, of course. Up here is an in-strike tactical rail, so if you want to put an optic or whatever, the trigger is pretty standard. The grip is also pretty standard, but it does slope forward more like the hammer shot rather than a traditional pistol, um, which is worth noting. Not really better or worse, it's just, you know, different. Then the priming handle, which is nice and comfortable. Quick pullback. Um, the draw is nice. Um, not really heavy or gritty. Very comfortable. Nice. Trigger pull is the same as any other current spring blasters. No real comments. Um, it, it feels very familiar because it's a zombie strike blaster and it fits that role very well. As complicated as this shell looks, those are actually all of the externals that I'm going to point out, sort of the standard stuff that I go over. Again, to fire the blaster, you just push darts in the front, you pull back, and then you can fire. Smart air restrictor system, I already explained that. And you can spin up the saw blade by pulling down on this trigger. Um, it is worth noting, you don't have to do that to fire or anything. It's just an accessory toy, um, just for the cool style points or whatever. You can fire the blaster without touching that trigger at all. Cool style points. Effective range of the blade varies based on arm length. <laughs> So as you can see, firing this blaster is a whole lot of fun. It's definitely cool and unique to have a spinning blade thing that's foam and of course not going to hurt anybody because it's foam on your pistol. The firing velocity is close to the 70 feet per second average, but it is worth noting the top barrel shoots considerably harder than the bottom one. It's a few feet per second over the norm, and then the bottom is a few feet per second below. I've always averaged my velocities over the blaster's potential, not per barrel. That's why the average is reflecting a weird average. But the performance is what you should expect from any spring blaster right now. It's shooting about 70 feet per second. Um, again, plus or minus six. You're probably not going to notice it, but it is worth noting, or at least worth noting for nerds like me who chronograph nerf blasters and you say, hey, I need every single feet per second possible. Foot per second, not feet per second. How did I mess that up? That's not even metric. Oh my gosh. <laughs> now getting to my opinion of the crosscut overall, I think this blaster is a whole lot of fun. I personally wouldn't use something like this because uh, it's a pistol class blaster that can't be holstered because of this massive blade thing. But for its role, I think it does exceptionally well. It's pretty small. I didn't have any mechanical jams because it's a single shot pistol. Hasbro hasn't messed one of those up in a little while. The performance is on par with other elite blasters and it's pretty comfortable, pretty fun to use. The blade thing is definitely fun to use. I do like that the entire thing is plastic. So if you hit somebody with any part Part of the blade you're not really going to hurt them i do caution everybody who wants to use one of these as a melee toy to remember that this foam is extremely close to this plastic and if you go for a barrel tap stab your muzzle is going to hit them before the blade which that's in my opinion a slight design flaw it makes sense if you drop the blaster so you don't hurt the chainsaw but then if you try to stab somebody you're going to hit them with the plastic attaching a foam safety toy to a plastic hard object will just ask a kid to smack somebody in the face with plastic because they aren't aware that the foam safety thing is so close to the plastic, so it's an accident waiting to happen. For responsible users and responsible melee people that just like to hit each other for fun, responsible melee, I don't know if that's an oxymoron, but it's pretty funny. But for those users, it should be pretty safe. Just keep that in mind. When you go for a melee, you know, you're very close to smacking somebody with plastic, which will hurt. So overall opinion, pretty positive. I think it fulfills its role as a goofy, quirky blaster really well. Um, I don't think any two-shot pistol of this size is going to be really war practical, but I think when you buy this, you know that. And that's important, in my opinion, for the consumer to receive what they're expecting when they make a purchase. You buy this and you're like, that's really cool. I want a saw thing. I want something that looks really awesome in the shell line 
designs are really cool, performs well. If you're looking for something like this, I don't think you'll be disappointed. But of course, if you try to holster this, you're going to completely destroy your saw blade. But again, you know, every blaster is not supposed to fulfill every role. This fulfills its role very well. But hopefully my review and firing demonstration gives you all the information you need to decide whether or not you want to purchase the blaster. And if you do want to buy one, there's a purchase link in the description box below. If you click through that, it helps me out just a little bit. That is my review of the Zombie Strike Crosscut. Thanks for watching, and remember, stay tactical. Crosscut review, take one. Oh yeah! This is so aggressive. Oh my. Video games are causing violence, not chainsawing, wanting to cut people up. That's...